And now, from the great state of Mississauga in Ontario, Canada, it's the Ted Wallachian Podcast. Brought to you by Tom's Place, for the finest in men's fashion. Tom's Place will suit you. And ETP Canada, providing a state administration with ease. ETP Canada. And now, here's Ted. Well, thank you so much, Becky, once again. Welcome, everybody. I am Ted Wallachian, and this is the Ted Wallachian Podcast. And we invite you to the Ted Wallachian website, which is www.tedwallachian.ca. Uh, there you'll find all of our past episodes, um, and we invite you to, to sign up. We've got some exciting things coming up in the near future. We'll let you know about that a little bit more. This week, we welcome comedian DJ Demers. He has created a new CBC comedy series called One More Time. Now, you may have seen him in the past. He's been on shows such as The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, America's Got Talent, Conan O'Brien, and he was nominated for a Juno Award for Best Comedy Album. Hey, it's a pleasure meeting you, first of all. Secondly, I saw uh, episode number one the other night and thoroughly enjoyed it. I got to tell you, you've got a great cast with tremendous chemistry there, and I think this thing has got longevity written all over it. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, I like that. I, it's a, I like for the concept for people who don't understand. The show's called One More Time, and One More Time is the name of a sporting goods store where it's used sports. And uh, DJ plays, are you the general manager, assistant manager? The manager, yeah. You're the manager of the store. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you should point out here that, that in during the course of the program, you're wearing hearing aids. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Yeah, I mean, I wear hearing aids in real life, so, uh, yeah. Okay. If they didn't want to take them off, or I wouldn't be able to hear what the heck's going on. Yeah, okay. But, but yeah. I noticed that they're very large. And you're not wearing large ones now. Well, they got larger near the end of the episode because I put on my older ones that were significantly larger after the dunk tank fiasco. Yes, yeah. You actually yeah. managed, you managed to turn that in. Uh, it's actually very cleverly done the way the way it works uh, because w without without giving it away, it 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 introduces a whole new aspect of your personality without you're hearing without being able to hear and now you're lip reading, but you're connecting with all these people and somehow managed to work them over to your store. I'll leave it there because I don't want to, I don't want to blow the rest of the thing there, you know, cause it'll, it'll ruin the story. But suffice to say it works well uh, for the, for people who aren't familiar with you, cause you're still a relatively young guy, but you've accomplished an awful lot. Uh, you've appeared on the, on the tonight show with Jimmy Fallon, America's got talent, Conan, uh, best Comedy nomination for the Juno Awards, uh, Breakout Artist at the Comedy Canadian Comedy Awards, Homegrown Comics Competition about Montreal Jazz, just for last festival, I should say, as well as a finalist on NBC's Stand Up for a Diversity. And as I mentioned, you're a young man. When did you start this career in comedy? How old were you? Um, first of all, thank you for saying I'm a young man. I appreciate that. Um, I started when I was uh, 23, so almost 15 years ago. Okay. Well, 38, yeah. 38, 38, 37, 38 is still a young man. Thank you. Yeah. See, when, yeah. When, you, when, you're, when you're rapidly approaching 70, you say these kinds of things because it makes you feel a little younger as well. Because if you were <laughs> an old man, what am I, prehistoric? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm... Uh, I it's funny when you're like you always hear that you're always going to look back and when you thought you were getting older, you're going to be like, oh, those were actually the glory days. So, yeah. yeah, I tried. I try to remind myself these are this is it. I'm in it right now. But and how um, how, how did you get involved in stand up? Where are you I from? Just, oh, I'm from Kitchener originally, Kitchener, mm -hmm. Ontario. And uh, I just loved comedy from a young age and I always wanted to try it. And then once I did, I I was just immediately hooked. So I just. I moved to Toronto when I graduated from uh, university at Laurier in Waterloo and just dove into it head first and started doing it every night when I was 23. Yeah. And were you inspired by any particular comedian or comics? Yeah. I, I Norm MacDonald is uh, my favorite of all time. I love mm. Norm. I love uh, Dave Chappelle. 
Uh, Jerry Seinfeld, I saw his special when I was in grade seven. I'm telling you for the last time. That one was a, a really early influence for me. Killing Them Softly by Chappelle, I saw in my second year of university, and that was a big one for me. I went through a George Carlin phase. Not a phase because I still love him, but when I was in university, I was really, really, he was really speaking to me. I was really starting to question the world, and I was like, yeah, this guy gets it. So yeah. George Carlin uh, was a big one for me, too. And then, you know, some of the newer ones, um, not newer, but uh, like Sarah Silverman, I'm a big fan of. Canadian. I I love John Doerr. John Doerr is a great comedian. So yeah, I've I've had a lot of influences along the way that uh, I've pulled little pieces from. And do you remember your first uh, time on stage and how did it go? It was uh, amazing. It was at the Yuck Yucks in Kitchener and just got up there and, you know, I was, I'd been thinking about doing it for like a year and I was really nervous to do it. I finally worked up the courage to do it and my family was there, a few friends and I put, you know, my memory's foggy, but I got a few laughs. I just got enough to, to hook me, to make me feel like I could do it again. Okay, good. Because it's, yeah. it's always important to remember two. Th- I used to do stand up, and I'm doing me to sound like I'm lecturing or anything, but it's always important to remember two things about your career when you start off. The first time it really went well, and the first time that you bombed, because you mm-hmm. need to eventually you do bomb whether it's oh, yeah. um, a, a year into it or two years into it, bad crowd, bad room, whatever. But it's always, it's I always need to remember those two things, the worst yeah. and the best. Yeah. And you hope that there's more bests than worst. But obviously yeah. for you, it's been a lot of really good ones. How did you go about, go, did you go about being the stand-up comedian to the star of a sitcom? Um. That's a good question. <laughs> I asked myself that. How how was I so lucky this happened? I, I wrote a sitcom a few years ago. I wrote the pilot for, for one more time. And I just wanted to been write it. I've wanted to write a, a pilot for a very long time. And, you know, the pandemic, obviously, live stand up was put on hold for a while. So I said, time to do it. Time to if I'm not going to do it now, then I'm never going to do it. So I finally I deleted all the social media off my phone tried to eliminate all the distractions and just put my head down and worked on it for a couple months and you know wrote the pilot wrote a whole series bible explaining all the characters and the world we're going to live in and uh cbc liked it i was very fortunate that cbc liked the world i had created and and we were off to the races we brought in jesse gabe to show run and she's just been incredible so this uh pretty good thing i wrote became even better once we brought Jesse aboard and then um, obviously a, a full writing team to write the whole, the whole uh, series. But mm-hmm. the original concept was conceived about three years ago. And how did you come up with the concept of a um, used sporting goods store? Had you worked in one before? Yeah, I worked at played against sports in Kitchener when I was in okay. high school. <laughs> so, you know, I was feeling pretty nostalgic and I was, you know, missing Canada. I was living in LA and uh, there's a lot of darkness kind of going on. There was a pandemic and there was protests happening and the world just had a, a little bit of a dark kind of tinge to it in, in my mind. And I was just trying to grasp at something that made me feel positive. And, it's, you know, it's easy to look back on your past and have those kind of rose colored glasses on and remember oh, those were the good old days. So I just tried to capture that feeling and and um I love workplace comedy, so I just thought that would be a nice, unique environment to to set a show up in. The first episode, which is the one that I've I've seen, mm-hmm. was it the first sh- episode shot? Was it shot as the pilot? Because sometimes the first episode is actually the third one that was shot, or the other way around. Yeah, no, that was the actual pilot that I wrote. That what you watched was what I wrote three years ago, and then with a lot of changes along the way once we once we uh, got the writers' room together. Well, I thought it was extremely well done for this reason, because your entire cast and crew are there. So you get an, you get an idea of each of their different individual personalities and the chemistry that they have between them and the little jealousies that they have between them and their importance in the show. And, and it gives you an opportunity to introduce everybody at the same time 
and it's a team effort. You're, 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 you're working toward a goal on one particular day of a certain amount of sales. So the team effort is there. Uh, and, and I think that works really well as an introduction to the program. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I like I like that element of it, too. And, you know, when I worked at Play It Against Sports, we would have the busiest Saturday of the year every year. If we hit ten thousand dollars in sales, they would take us out for uh, food and drinks at the uh, restaurant right next door. So um, I just changed it from 10 grand to 20 grand just to take inflation into account. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty much based on what we actually had at my store when I was in high school. So pretty true to life. And the characters, are they based on people that you know? Sort uh, of? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. P pieces pulled from different people. Something completely concocted out of thin air. Some things are like elements of, of my personality that I just ascribe to different characters. So kind of a hodgepodge. Now, is it, because it's based um, at, and the location is a store, is it going to be hard to write or was it hard to write episodes that take you outside the store? Or are you always going to be in the store? It wasn't hard. It just cost a lot more money every time you leave yeah, the set. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, not hard from a creative standpoint. From a financial standpoint, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're encouraged to try to stay within the, the walls of the store a little bit. But no, we, we went on location for a few weeks while we were shooting. So we definitely leave the store for some storylines. Or else it can, it can feel a little claustrophobic if you never leave those four walls. But I think we have a good healthy amount of within the store and then also other locations. Because I was thinking about that as after I was watching your program, I tuned in and I was watching an old episode of uh, Cheers. And I thought to myself, my gosh, you know, like the vast majority of that program over the years was shot in the bar. Every once yeah. in a while, they would go outside, they'd go to somebody's apartment or there might be a, uh, a scene in a park or, or driving in a car somewhere. But the vast majority of it was done inside the walls of that bar. I know. and and But that's part of the charm, right? You want to go where everyone knows your name and you know yeah. you're going to be in that bar. But I also, now that I know this other side of the industry, if I watch Cheers, I'm like, damn, that must have been cheap to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Considering there, there actually was a bar that existed that they could use. They didn't have to build one, right? Yeah. 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 Ted Wallachin returns in a moment. I've had the great fortune to say that I've been associated with one of Toronto's finest names in men's clothing for more than 25 years. Tom's Place. Founded by Tom Mahalik's father in 1958, Tom's Place offers brand name men's apparel at unbeatable prices. But more than that, they boast a long serving, knowledgeable and friendly staff that can assist you whether you're looking for casual or formal attire. And they have plenty of first class tailors on site. In addition, Tom and his family are well known for their philanthropic work. So if you're looking to deal with great people who can fulfill your clothing desires at outstanding prices, do yourself a favor and visit Tom's Place. They're open weekdays from 11 to 6, Saturdays 10 to 5, and Sundays noon to 5. You'll find Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Or check them out online at toms-place.com. Tom's Place will suit you. Have you been tasked with the role of a state executor or expected maybe in the future you will be? Well, if so, let me make your life a lot simpler by introducing you to my friend, Debbie Stanley. Debbie is the founder of ETP Canada. They specialize in estate administration. Their goal simply is to help Canadian executors understand their role and how to deal with the loved one's estate. Let's face it, there's no school for this, but ETP Canada offers services such as executor support, estate accounting, and they have a new online course called Executor Ready. It's an engaging video designed to make estate administration easier and affordable, and those are two comforting thoughts during a stressful time. So call Debbie Stanley at one 866 309-0387, that's 1-866-309-0387, or you can get her at info at etpcanada.ca, that's info at etpcanada.ca. Now back to Ted Wallachin. 
what kind of things can we see happening in, in the thir- 13 episodes that you've got booked, correct? Yeah, the first few episodes are... Um, I'm looking forward stuck. to the second episode about the Rocket Richard Skates. Tell us a little bit about that. The Rocket Richard Skates? Yeah. Did you see episode two? Uh, no, but I'm going to. Uh, okay. Yeah, the Rocket Richard one, that, that's episode two. That's uh, somebody trades in a pair of skates that they don't realize are actually worth a lot of money because they belong to the Rocket. And they're actually the exact skates that he wore the night that he punched a linesman in the face and caused the famed Richard riot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that episode's actually really, I like that one because it kind of speaks to the the magic that can happen in a used boarding goods store. Like, you don't actually know the history of all these things that are coming in. So, yeah, you know, one man's junk is another man's treasure type thing. You, you might not even know the treasure that you have on your hand. So, the person who trades them in doesn't realize and that the rest of the episode is spent trying to find that person and, and return their exp- their their very valuable skates to them. Yeah, it's it's because uh, it's like you hear stories about people who go to uh, garage sales and Goodwill and they and they buy these paintings because it'll match their furniture and and it ends up being a Van Gogh sketch or something. And it's worth like eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They paid a buck and a yeah. quarter for it. Exactly. Yeah. Talk to me about about the people in the, the cast members and introduce them to the to the listeners so that they may be more familiar with them because a lot of them have quite fantastic resumes as well. The, the, you want me to run through the cast members? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, you got DJ played by me, who's the manager of the store. You got Cynthia, who is uh, played by Jerry Hall, uh, who is just. Yeah, we love her. We love all the cast members, but Jerry is just such a great blend of, um, you know, strength and vulnerability. And she's just such a great comic actress. Uh, then you got um, actually, if you've only seen one, we have an, an episode in a later episode, we have a new hire and his name is Chris. And he's the security guard at Sports Dynasty in episode one that you watched. So he he right. comes and joins one more time and he's played by Dayton Sinkaya. Um, really offbeat cadence and delivery. We we just love what he brings to the table. Um Elise Bauman uh plays Jen and she's this competitive, uber competitive, tough um athlete who uh is pretty at odds with Wayne a lot, who's played by Dan Byrne and he's a slacker who's been working there forever and does not give a crap about the job. And Dan, just an incredible actor, too. I've been a fan of his for a long time. And um, and so is Elise. She's tremendous. And then Saren, um, uh, his last name, Yathis. I'm going to butcher it. My apologies to Saren. But he plays Kieran, and he's young. He's 15 years old. And we were very happy that we were able to find a true teenager to play the teenager in the show because he brings that teenage energy and he's just um he's got a, a real charisma to him an innocent charisma that we really love mm-hmm. so i believe that rounds out the whole cast and then we have um chris robinson and nadine baba who both work over at angry owls um and they're also both incredible actors and chris is a really great stand-up comedian longtime friend of mine too so just loved the whole cast. We had a great time all summer shooting it. Angry Elves is a, the chicken wing place, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 Because there's a there's a, a, a funny the prize that everybody is going for. Everybody is thinking is a different prize, and one of the guys is thinking that they're going to a strip club. And yeah, it's... there's a very funny sequence where he says, "Well, where were you announcing? Okay, we're going to Angry Elves for wings." And he says, well, what about breasts? And you say, yeah, they got breasts too, but your wings are what they're known for. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very funny. I, I don't want to give away all the stuff, but I mean, it's just to, to let people I know. There's some, there's some very, very sharp writing. And, and again, it's it's a really interesting mix of, uh, of characters. And it's the kind of characters that you would find in a typical retail establishment. Yeah, exactly. Every there's everybody's a bunch of weirdos walking around on this planet. So 
Yeah. Um, I, I use weirdos in an affectionate way, like every even seemingly normal people. Everybody's got their their little quirk. So um, you definitely would see this interesting blend of people in in the walls of this retail setting. Everybody's got everybody's got a story, and and everybody's got a quirk. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And that How the you- fun thing is when you present people who seemingly don't have any of that, and then you know, dropping little breadcrumbs and letting people know about what their quirks are. That's, that's an interesting thing to do too. Some people yeah. in the face right away with their quirkiness and some people you got to pull the thread a little bit to see what it is. Yeah. And those are the fascinating ones because you see them develop. They're not, they're not obvious from the beginning, uh, but you see them develop and you start thinking to yourself, that was kind of weird. Why do you do that? And without letting yeah. anything, without letting the cat out of the bag, you just let the cat sort of peek through the bag and now next episode we're gonna see a little bit more of the cat and more of the cat and and you never know and it's i, I guess that's one of the great challenges when when you're working with cast members because you can see them as as the show grows you can see them growing as well and then maybe they they show you a part of their abilities that you didn't know existed when you first started writing the show so now you start writing to their strengths that's that such a great at all? point yeah. Well, yeah, when we were writing the script. We didn't have it casted at all. And then about halfway through our writer's room and we have like half of the scripts written. Now maybe we have half of the cast chosen. So now for about half of your cast, you're actually able to visualize who's going to be saying these lines. And the other half, you still don't have the actors yet. So I'm very curious if we got to a season two and now that we really know who these actors are and who they are portraying the, the specific characters, how that will influence what we write for them it's it's a it's um it gives so much more depth to it where you're actually able to visualize who's actually going to be saying these lines you know i i, I was speaking earlier with mark critch about the season three of uh, son of critch and in in the season um young mark of beginning grade nine which is just the end of uh, junior high and mm-hmm. and, it, and the idea is that he'll go through that entire year and by the end of the season, he will graduate from grade nine. So they know where the, where the, how the show is going to end. Do you have mm. an idea at the beginning where you were going to take this thing? Or was it just a matter of finding storylines to continue or just individual storylines? Yeah. DJ is actually going to go back and complete grade nine. That's what happened in, uh, in our season. He's going back to high school. Uh, oh, no, yeah? I'm just kidding. He's yeah. got a, <laughs> He's got a bit of an arc. It's like funny. It's like I'm trying to I was talking to another person earlier about what his arc is. It's like not necessarily like it's not as clean as that. Right. It's not like he goes to grade nine and then graduates grade nine. But we see him grow. We see him fall in love. We see him get his heart broken. We see him um, form new enemies. We see enemies turn into friends. We see he goes through a lot. The show actually season one is or sorry, episode one is probably like the most grounded episode. And then everybody in the show kind of goes to some pretty weird and crazy places over the course of those 13 episodes. So a lot of fun stuff happened. Little mini arcs. Yeah. In the process of of writing the show, once it had been cast and once you'd gone through the first, second, third, did did you find yourself taking detours and saying, well, you know, we were thinking maybe he'd do this, but let's go here. Let's go here instead. Like, how often would you change path? While we were filming? Yeah. Uh, we would change. Yeah, sometimes it would change for production reasons, and sometimes it would change for creative reasons. Like, it didn't happen. Little changes happened every day. Little rewrites, all these sorts of things. But in terms of big character changes, there wasn't a whole lot that we did. We might do certain things, like if we realized a certain actor... Um, like doing things a certain way than like if they like speaking slower when they were mad let's say just to make something up then we would like we would write less for them when they were mad knowing that it was going to take them a lot longer to get those words out that's just a hypothetical thing but once you once you learn the mannerisms of everybody then you can actually tweak the dialogue to match um what you know their actual cadences and their rhythm and all these sorts of things so yeah, we definitely customized it as we got to know everybody as we went along, but no like major sweeping changes or anything. How do you think the people that play against sports are going to feel? 
It's a good question. I think uh, it's a bit of a love letter to to an industry that I think you so could too. See as, yeah, I feel like it's it's that's kind of the whole conceit of the show, right? How do these stores stay in business with big box stores and online shopping and and the the focus is on community. That's how you stay in business. You you form a a connection with your community. So I think. I hope that played against sports and the one that I actually worked at in Kitchener, I hope when they see it, they, they feel it's a, a love letter. I would imagine that they would. I think that they should anyway. Uh, it's a very entertaining show. As, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a, a great compilation of talent. Um, the concept is a solid one, very Canadian. A lot of skates and hockey sticks and helmets in there. Yeah, make sure, very much so. Make, make the average Canadian feel comfortable right off the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one Rocket more. Richard. Yeah, and Rocket Richard, I look forward to seeing yeah. that episode. I recommend this uh, for all, it's, uh, for the entire family. It premieres, one more time does, Tuesday, January the 9th at 9 p.m. on CBC and uh, CBC Gem. And you've got, uh, so you've got Son of Critch as your lead in. Not bad. Not bad at all. Couldn't Not ask bad. for a better lead-in. DJ, listen, I want to thank you very much for the time. I wish you all the best, and uh, hopefully we can chat again toward the end of the year. Absolutely. Thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself. See ya. That'll do it for another episode of the Ted Wallace Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Drop by our website, www.tedwallishyn.ca. And you can check out all of our past episodes. Look forward to your comments and your questions as well. And while you're online, don't forget to fill out your organ and tissue donation card. You could change or even save a life. Have a great week. The Ted Wallace and Podcast has been brought to you by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And ETP Canada, providing estate administration with ease. The Ted Wallace and Podcast is produced by me, Becky Coles. Technical production by Paul Gatt. Music by Bike Thieves. For more information on this podcast and our sponsors, and to talk to Ted, go to www.tedwallishan.ca.